Hello. Yes, it is true. I am a physicist. But I work in biology in, for about 15 years now. And it is really fascinating. And I'm actually here today to restart your mind about these thinking in these disciplines. And I will do this in this context of looking at cancer from a different perspective. And this is really what I like to do today with you. But before I start, I would like to ask all of you a question. And that question is rather simple. Maybe you're a bit touched by it, but it's just think about, have you known someone or do you know someone who is touched by cancer, who kind of like maybe had experienced it? Yet? I am. And just raise your hand if you are if you know someone. And you, if you look around, it's, it's amazing. I mean, I can't see you, but it's almost everybody lifts their arm. It is a very important problem, but there's also something else. Like, for all, a lot of us, actually, it is kind of a sensitive thing, you know, to think about it. And the reason is we, we kind of, like, think about cancer and we think about death. And we don't want to die, right? We want to be immortal. I want to be immortal, no question about it. And there's actually a person who kind of achieved this in some sense, and that is... Henrietta Lacks, this is a new citizen, and actually she, it's, there's this book, The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks, she actually had cancer, and out of this cancer, we generated some of the cell lines that we use in the lab nowadays, all the time, 65 years after her death. So, in some sense, we might think like, oh, yeah, immortal, that's what we want, but in another sense, this is actually something that would be out of balance. Okay, now you might ask yourself, well, Who's this guy? It's a physicist, you know, what is this physicist talking to us here about cancer? That should be a biologist or a physician. And that is true. And actually, I face all of these stereotypes about physics all the time. I mean, just if I'm at a barbecue party or the cocktail party, and then we come to small talk, and then somebody asks me, like, I said, what do you do? And I'm like, I'm a physicist. And then I can kind of like see it in their eyes that they think exactly of <laughs> this person here. <laughs> and we are not like this. Ah. Maybe there are some, but typically, we're just normal people. Um, unfortunately, there's also a very strong association that I feel when I talk about yeah, my, my, uh, my background, that I'm a physicist, and some people actually really connect to it weapons of mass destructions. That's also kind of like an outcome of science, but it's a negative one. We also have a lot of positive feedback, on the other hand. I, I have a lot of people that tell me, like, wow, don't you build these, like, huge machines? Like, this is the LHC where we try to figure out what's going on on the planet. But to be honest, the most often, and I guess this is also for a lot of you here the case, the most often comment is like, oh, I was never good at math. <laughs> and you all think about, oh, it's these complicated situations where somebody writes down these complicated things. And this is something I really, really want to fight because physics is actually about simplification. What we try to do, and this is really then related to our cancer problem later, we really try to simplify the world as good as we can. And a beautiful example, I think, is this one. Like, here's the Earth, right? It's holding place, and it's not magic. Like, humans thought for a long time it's magic. No, we can describe it with this simple formula. This is extreme simplification, if you think about it. It holds our planet where it is, it holds me here, and it holds you on your seats. Maybe not after my talk. Okay, so it's all about, it's, it's all about simplification. And when I started now looking into the field of cancer, what happened is that I was immediately exposed to these kind of knowledge. We have more than 200 different cancer types out there. And when I look at this, for me, this was overwhelming. And I was immediately thinking like, okay, I need to simplify this. And if you think about it, one of the most problematic things about cancer is actually, sorry, the formation of metastasis here. And this is something that really makes you sick from cancer, because when you have these cells moving out of the primary tumor here, these gray cells are the cancer cells, they kind of like, they move out, they enter the bloodstream, and then they're virtually traveling all over your body, and they might end up in your lungs, in your liver, and that is really the disaster for the human body. So, then this is something that is like simplified already. All these 200s share this feature. And this is something like I personally think has something to do with physics. I wanted to focus on this. Why is there physics involved? Well, it's a very simple reasoning. Just what I said, cancer become real, becomes really dangerous when it forms metastasis. And on the other hand, it does, to form a metastasis, the cells need to move around. And now, of course, to move, well, I need to apply forces on the ground. And that's where I'm home, right? We need, cells need to actually apply forces 
they need to detach from the primary tumor and to move through the body. And this is really where now suddenly physics enter. And I think where me as a physicist or other physicists can really contribute something to this field. So to actually study this, I'm an experimentalist, I do experiments, we need to come up with a model system. And that is something that's extremely important for us. It needs to be reproducible and it needs something reliable for us. And we do this using some of the cell lines that I just introduced. We actually do not use Henrietta Lacks cells. We use here CT26. They are marked in a way that they will be fluorescent. You will see this later. This is, by the way, a highly aggressive colon cancer cell line that comes out of a mouse. Well, we put these cells on a surface where they cannot attach to. And what happens then is that these cells start to, they, they're gripping, they want to attach to something, and they grip their neighbors, and they kind of pull all together and they form these beautiful balls here. We call them spheroids, but it's some, something like a model tumor. And this is what we do our experiments on. Now, we're interested here in formation of metastasis, and I talked to you, well, I told you that we need to have these cells migrating out. We need a matrix around, we need to embed this into something. And actually, what we use here is a polymer that's called collagen. We can buy this, and this is, by the way, when you grab on your earlobe, that's pretty much what you have in there. So this is really something that is in your body. We generate a small drop of this. It's not looking like an earlobe, but it has the same consistency. And then we embed these spheroids in there. And now we have a model system that we can prepare hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times, and we can study and try to learn something. However, it is not in the human body, of course, right? It's a simplified system. I'm a physicist. I like this. OK, now how does that look like? Let me share with you one of these movies that we generate. So this is collagen around, what you can see here. At the center, you see this tumor. You see very nicely how it grows over time, and you can also see beautifully how these cells start to migrate out. And when I saw that with my eyes of a physicist, I was amazed by a couple of features. One feature for me was these cells seemed to start out to migrate at the same time. How the hell does the cell on the left side know what the cell on the right side does? They don't have a watch. What we also see, these cells very often migrate out radially. How do they know? They don't have a compass, right? So these are very simple questions that I try to answer with basic physics here in a second. Another thing that I was really interested in here, intrigued by, was the fact that the collagen was moving inward, right? If you watch it there, you can see it. This collagen starts to move towards, towards the sphere. What's going on there? And these are things that we've studied in the last years, and I would like to share that with you and hopefully convince you that very simple arguments, in the end you will say it's all obvious, I hope so, uh, we can understand that. So what happens here is actually that we need to, to study this, we need to look a little bit more at the collagen alone, and then we use actually a microscopy type that's called fluorescence microscopy. It's quite beautiful what we have here. In green are these cancer cells now, this is the spheroid, and we see here in red around this collagen again. And you can see very beautifully again how these cells move out. Of course, that's the problem, that is the formation of metastasis. Now I told you I'm interested in the collagen for a second. Let's just get rid of the green channel and only look at the red channel. We can do this now. And when you see this, you see some striking effects. One is that this collagen is getting enriched here at this like boundary, but also you can see that it forms these parallel fibers that are actually parallel to the surface. And this is very interesting because if you kind of like look at histology cuts from humans or from mice, we find these structures also in the human. This is not obvious because we have here a very simplified model system, but we find similar structures. If we now look into these cuts, we actually do also find other structures, like radial structures. You can see some of them here emerging out there. And this is, if we look in, if we zoom in a bit, this is something we can also see in these model systems. So this is just the full spheroid. We can kind of zoom into this part. And now you can see here at the surface, we have these parallel structures. And out there, we have these radial structures. And these radial structures are really, really problematic because if you have these as a cancer patient, what happens is that the cells start to migrate along them. And what we have here is a very, very simple, I think, explanation why this happens. It's just geometry because these cells, in my opinion, start to pull inwards. And then what happens, so this is the potato sack, the famous one. This is my model college and it works quite well. If we start pulling on this material, in the beginning it's kind of elastic, but if you pull strongly, you can see it forms these fibers on its own. So there's nothing complicated involved, it's only that these cells start to apply forces to migrate out, and that's what's actually deforming now this collagen matrix. Okay, so this is a little bit the take-home message for this part, that uh, only by the fact that these cells start to apply forces, I think we have these structures that we find in the, in the real human body. But there's more to it. Because if we, oops, 
if we look at this again, right, we saw that the collagen seems to somehow be pulled in. And this really is a little bit why I brought the skateboard. You might have saw, seen that. Um, you can really now try to understand this, and now I would like to do an experiment here, experiment on stage. So my son borrowed me this skateboard with the big promise that I will not destroy it. Let's see. So the, the idea of this experiment is rather simple. Let's say I am the cancer cell here. Well, ups. Yes. I'm the cancer cell, and I'm just imagining I'm attached to other cancer cells here. And I would like to go over there to the beautiful music player. So what I have to do, I have to somehow get there. And I can't, right? No, I can. If I just start pulling on the collagen, and what you see now is that the collagen gets pulled in just as we see it in real life, and then at some point I can start moving out. And this is exactly this take-home message that I want to give you from this very simple experiment is that to apply, to move out, these cells need to apply a force to the surrounding. And that is the reason why actually this collagen moves in. So just very quickly to kind of like recapitulate that in a very simple model here, what you have is you have this collagen fibers here, and then you have cells that want to apply a force, they want to detach from their, from their model tumor, and what they do is they just pull on it. And once they kind of like have pulled all of this out, Right? Then suddenly the material becomes stiff. And again, this is exactly what you can demonstrate here with this model collagen. Again, if I pull on it in the beginning, it's floppy. I cannot apply a force. With my rope, it was just lush, slushy on the ground. I'm pulling it in, and at some point, I can actually apply forces. And that's what's happened here. Once this collagen can actually sustain the forces, it can grow out. Okay, so what did we learn here? We learned, I think, two main things. One is that cells will grow out simultaneously and radially in all directions. And it's only geometry that tells us this. Because if these cells start to move, the moment where they can create the right force is on all sides the same. And by just pulling all this collagen inward, they create a certain orientation, right? So there's another prediction, which is kind of important here, I think. There can be no, so there can't be invasion if we cannot actually build up this tension. And to demonstrate this, it's very simple. If we kind of would cut the rope, right? I have here the second rope. If this rope is not connected to the side, if I pull it in here, I will not be able to move. If I would now be on my skateboard, of course, there would be no movement. And that means we can actually make an experiment to test this hypothesis. And that's what we did in the lab. We just generated these spheroids again, and we did cut the surface here. Now, if we now run the movie, I don't know if you get this prediction, but what we predict is that actually here at this side, the cells cannot move out just because this buildup of tension, of mechanical tension, is not possible. And if we take a look at this, I hope that the movie runs, yes. If we take a look at this, exactly that happens. They pull the collagen in here very nicely, but the cells, they cannot move out, okay? So here we have, I think, a very nice example where physics should actually really be part of the analysis when we look at these cancer, these formation of metastasis. Just let me wrap that up quite quickly. What I would like you to kind of like take out of this is that invasion is also to some extent a mechanical event, right? So we add something new to the science here. There is a little bit of problem because by applying forces, the cancer cells will finally change their environment somehow, right? To actually support the migration. And this is something that doesn't need any complicated genetically encoded system. All we need is that these cells start applying forces. And that might be a reason why all these cancers, if they come from totally different tissues, they share this feature. It's just a simple simplification, and we have here a self-organization going on. Of course, we can kind of like hope to learn something about this. What I would like to propose is that we should really also look at the simple mechanics when we look about cancer, and we should also now maybe look at this collagen side, at this extracellular matrix, not only focus on the cancer cells, because maybe we can help the treatment of patients here on this side. And I would just like to stop with this final slide. This is really kind of like the restarting message that I have for you. When you look at nature, I think we should really look beyond our different disciplines, because in our case here, a cancer cell doesn't care what we call physics or chemistry or biology. A cancer cell just does what it does. And to understand it, we need to join forces. And then I think we're quite well equipped. And with this, I would like to thank you for your attention. <laughs>